Hey, what's up? I'm Ecstasy Jones, and this is a wave editor I made for Teenage Engineering's TP7 field recorder. I've been tinkering with the TP7 for a couple weeks now, and I decided to make this program. This little machine's really rad, and I want to be able to unlock its full potential. The purpose of this program is to embed WAV files with extra information that the TP7 can read, so that we can use it as a MIDI clock source or a DJ tool. Whenever we open up the program, we can see this interface. If we get confused about how to use it, we can just click this little question mark in the top right corner, and a blurb will pop up with the controls. We can start by clicking this little music note in the top left to import a file. This program supports 8, 16, and 24-bit WAV files. It won't work with 32-bit waves or any kind of MP3. Let's select an audio file to import. When the audio file loads, we can see the waveform represented in this viewport, and also some information about it on the bottom. When we hover over the waveform, we can see a playhead following our mouse. If we hit space, the audio will play from the playhead's position. We can input the tempo at the top. If the audio was recorded on the TP7, or has an ACID tag already embedded in it, the editor will automatically read it from the metadata. We can type in this input field to change the tempo. I know that this file has a tempo of 170, so I'll just type that in. If the program doesn't read any tempo information in the file, it'll just default to 120. If we type 0 in this field, the tempo information will be removed from the file on export. We can tap tempo with T, or we can use the distance between two cues to approximate the tempo by pressing C. A little bit more on that later. To add a cue, we can simply click the waveform viewport. We can move this cue around by dragging the handle. Let's add a few more cues. To select a different cue, we can click the handle, or use the arrow keys to navigate from left to right. The selected cue will be black, and unselected cues will be red. When a cue is selected, pressing space will now play from the cue point. Up arrow, escape, or clicking the background will deselect the cue. You can use the scroll wheel on the mouse to zoom into the waveform for more granularity. We can see the zoomed in version up top, but also the full waveform in the scroll bar below, with a reference to where our cues are placed. Additionally, we can use the bracket keys on our keyboard to nudge the selected cue for fine tuning. Pressing delete or right clicking a cue handle will remove the selected cue. Below the viewport, we have a few buttons. We can press this button to normalize the audio. We also have a grid that we can turn on. The grid will be based on the tempo that we input at the top. If we turn on grid snapping, we can drag a cue and it'll snap to the grid lines. The grid resolution will dynamically adjust to our zoom level. Maybe we have an audio file that we're trying to align to a grid, but it has some sort of intro and the start of the audio doesn't really correspond to the starting beat. We can select a cue and move it to a beat manually. If we turn on the grid and press tab, the grid will automatically shift to align with the selected cue. That way we can add more cues with grid precision. Let's try calculating a tempo from two cue points. First, I'll find a beat and place my first cue point. Then, I'll find another beat that's one bar away and place that one. With both cue points in place, I'll select the left one and press C. You can see both the tempo and the grid being updated based on this calculated distance. Once we're done, we can hit export. We can see that the program keeps the original name of the file, but also adds the tempo and number of cues into it for easy reference. Let's load it into our TP7 now. Here's the original file before we modified it, and here's the edited one. 
We can look at the tempo by pressing stop and mode. We can see that the original doesn't have any tempo information. If we look at the modified file, we can see that this one does. Having tempo information on our file in the TP7 is super useful because it allows us to use the TP7 as a clock source. If I go to MIDI settings and then choose sync, the TP7 will send a clock based on the tempo. If there's no tempo information associated with the file, the TP7 will not send clock. Let's clock this file to the OPZ. I'm going to turn off MIDI out on the OPZ and just connect the two with USB. When I press play on the TP7, the OPZ will receive clock and sync to it. If I use the Verispeed feature on the TP7 or play with the wheel, you can see the speed of the sequencer changing on the OPZ to match. If we go into queue mode, we can see that the original file does not have any queues, but the new one has queues at the exact times that we specified in our editor. Let's compare these to the queues in our program and make sure they line up. Cool, yeah, that sounds good to me. If we want to edit our audio file again after exporting, we can just re-import it and the program will automatically read and add our previous tempo information and cue points. That's all I've got for now. Hope you find this useful in your hardware endeavors. Enjoy, and feel free to suggest changes for future updates. Thanks for watching. Let's prove it. Let's prove it.